for this tutorial, I wanted to build a couple of signet rings and to show some other flexible models that could be built. And you could use this kind of a technique to build a shank as well. If you weren't really sure exactly on the shape of the shank, on how you want it to, to flow, then you could use this kind of technique um, as well for a ring that's not a signet ring. But I find the signet ring builder is very helpful, but sometimes it can be kind of limited in what you can do. So having something made flexible in this way could be beneficial. So first I'm just making, I'm gonna make a kind of cushion shape top. And for that, I might make a curve that's first centered. If you're not sure that it's centered or not, you can use your center object. I'm gonna center that in the X. And as I kind of explore that shape, you might choose to use array polar or rotate copy. And then if you continue to choose the original one, okay, I got rid of that line. That was kind of lucky though. But if you, um, if you choose to manipulate the original, then the other copies are gonna adjust as well. So if you're not sure about how cushiony you want your cushion shape to be, that could be a helpful way to do that. When you're happy with that shape, I'm gonna join it together. And I'll use the gumball to move it to my desired height for the top thickness. I'm gonna choose maybe 3.5. And we're going to use curve from two views on this project. So first I'm going to draw my outside line. And for that, you might choose to draw this using blend targets or another way, if you wanted to explore some different tools as well. This function was in, in Rhino 4, but I never used it. It's a variation, or it's a different option or argument up at the top. In the command line called end, end tangent to make sure that the curve that you finish can be tangent with the rest of the ring. I'm gonna draw this, but before I finish, I'm gonna click on end tangent, and I want it to end tangent with that straight line, that vertical line. So I'll click on that line and then drag that down. And that's gonna ensure that my control point is gonna be vertical, which is making it tangent. Okay, so that's gonna be, actually I guess I'll leave that. That's gonna be my kind of outside ring rail for this. And I'm going to add a profile. I'll choose one that has corners, maybe number three right here. It doesn't have filleted corners, it has hard corners. And I'll choose 3.5 for the height, and I'll change the second rail height to that curve right here. Okay, so that's going to be my outside. Now it's not exactly matching to that corner, but that's okay. Now for the side view, that's where we're going to draw our next curve. That's going to be uh, one of our input curves for curve from two views. Whenever I draw with curve from two views, I want to keep my project mode on. I'm going to create my target one at the top here. And I'll create one at my profile and straight down. So my last original curve was red, so I'll create this one in red as well. And I'll change my strategy here. Instead of doing interp curve and tangent, I want this to be a little more flexible, so I'm going to use blend curve. Okay, so these curves I'm going to combine with a new color. I'll use the bright green. Maybe I'll use actually this, because this is going to be kind of a throwaway curve. You'll see what I mean in a second. When I use curve from two views to combine these curves here, they're not matching up to the proper corner. But 
that can be okay. You can you can just accept that because you can use another tool to slightly change that. And that's gonna be orient two points, which also now has history. So the project went off. These are my original two reference points, beginning and end. And my target point, I'm gonna make a copy that goes from the corner to the corner. And I'll press enter two times. So that's gonna be the curve that I wanna keep. So I'm gonna turn that into a different color. And this color, I don't wanna delete because as long as it keeps changing, it's gonna to continue to change this. So I don't wanna delete it, but I don't really need it. So I'm gonna hide it. And that curve, I'm gonna create a mirror, which is also gonna be a copy. Okay, to create this top surface, actually, I need to have this to be separate curves. Okay, make, to make this top surface, I could create this top surface right here. So it's nice and smooth and there's no point in the middle. If I create this surface using curve network. So you hit preview to see what that looks like. And I'm pretty happy with that for now. So I'm going to say OK. I'll just quickly save my work here with that other hidden curve. Okay, now that outside, I'm going to mirror to the other side. And something that I might do actually is I might create a profile down here that goes from the corner to the corner because the way that I'm going to make this outside wall is going to be a sweep to, I'll use this edge and this edge, and this is my top profile and this straight line is going to be my bottom profile. I'll turn maintain height on so it's not going to stick out as far. And I'll say okay, and I'm not going to join that with anything yet. I'm just going to keep this separate. Okay, it might be hard to see what your ring shape's gonna look like here. So usually I choose to take my finger rail and to extrude that, which I will use later on as a cutter, but for now I'm just gonna use it so I can kind of visualize this ring a bit easier. If you want as well, you could close up this top using uh, your planar curves, surface from planar curves. And I believe you could use either one here. You could use your curves or your edges. It wouldn't really make much of a difference, I don't think. Okay, and so that will close it. And if you did make any adjustments to the curve, then, or the edges, if you were using the edges, then it would change your planar surface because that does have history now. Um, as far as the rest of the ring, you could finish that right now if you wanted to as well, or you could just take a look at adjusting the ring if you wanted to. So maybe I'll decide to make some changes at this point. Uh, one way to make changes would be to change your target right here, change that direction. And to do that, I'm going to turn on my edit points and start changing, start changing this top control point. Actually, this is going to be an edit point. If you want another window for this, if I want to keep my perspective window um, maybe full screen but have another small window or something, you could drag this, um, the name of the viewport and drag it onto your stack. And if you let go of it there, that's going to create a new window. So be able to do that. So I have a big screen here. I can kind of investigate my ring, but over here I can just choose. I think you can set the view as well if you want to have your side view. Uh, I'll do that, sure. So now it's locked. And if I move that, I'm going to hold on to shift to keep that straight. You don't actually have to keep hold on to shift. It's the habit for me. making changes to this edit point, you can see it's changing your curve from 2D, which was actually over here somewhere. 
is a little bit higher than this green, but because it's still around on a hidden color, it's, it's still updating this one that was oriented from two points. play around with that shape a little bit too. Um, you could also uh, maybe look at the front here. If you wanted to, you could adjust the original other input curve, which is going to be the through finger, the outside rail. You could rebuild this, or you could just move the control points if you wanted to. I'm just going to turn on the gumball here. If you wanted to have the top here be different than just being flat, if you want to have it have a bit of a pillowy top, well, I've also built this so that it sinks in like a bowl. Then you could scale this to be smaller. And with my gumball, I'm going to choose a scale option. I'm going to hold on to shift to make that a 3D scale. And just so that it has history. You might not use this at the very end for the final design, but just to visualize what it might look like as you're making changes. Because blend service doesn't work with history, you might use this last, but again, just as you're making changes, you might use loft for this. And it also just gives me an opportunity to show you um, how it's changed a little bit. But you have to choose here your, your edges if you're going to do this. Uh, the reason why is because now in your dialog box, you could choose tangency. So it's going to match the direction that this surface, surface was traveling in. And so curves don't really have any direction uh, in this vertical direction. They would only have a direction from side to side. But because the surface edge has direction, it's able to calculate that tangency. So I'm going to choose edge to edge and match the start and end, start and end tangency. Okay, so now by adjusting uh, this surface right here then the lofts are also going to update. So if you want to have that to be pillowed up, that's so you can adjust that. You also might choose to change this color to something else just to be clear. It's helpful to be to make it clear to yourself which one are uh, which objects are your, your original inputs and which ones will break history. So in this case, we're really going to change this white thing at all, this white surface. And you might change that to white as well or something, just to make it clear. Those are your, your inputs. Okay. If you want to finish off the bottom as well here, then... Uh, you could do that with a, a sweep one. That would make it pretty simple for the bottom. If I use the top edge, it's the top edge. That's rotating around, so I have to go uh, clockwise. I have to use the curve. I don't have the other curve here. Um, okay, well, let's just see that we're finished with that. 
do make a couple small changes here still. It's got an issue like that. So if you're finished with this, then that will actually hold some with this if you want to change the height at all. You still can, but you're going to have to move some other things along with it. So if I want to move this vertically, I have to have my curves here. They're going to move along with me. Uh, this is also going to move along with me. And really, I would want to have the top control point on here to also follow me. And if I move all of these together, maybe I'll move this top surface too, so it's also going to keep that same dome shape. Then I believe that's enough to keep this whole piece together. not quite going together. The reason why there's a small difference is because my orient two points has been broken. So this corner is slightly off. This sweep here is fine. Because I believe it was using this outside edge. which one I used as the surface, or as the sweep rail, but if I want to start this history again to fix this, because this isn't matching up perfectly, I have to delete these outsides, because these greens are not matching up properly. So I have to bring back this, this shape here, this is the resulting curve from two views that comes from this and this right here. That I need to reorient from here to here. Excuse me. Goes to here and back to the corner of the profile. Enter, enter. And so that I'm going to mirror to the side because I need all three of these curves. I'll copy yes. So all three of these rails and this top and bottom profile are all going to be used to make that curve network again. For that loft, I'm going to use the surface edges again. And if I want, I can just mirror that. It's just symmetrical anyway, so I can just mirror it. Okay, so you can do a bit of uh, exploration with this, with the design which I like. Uh, maybe not that's a good design idea, but um, if you're finished with this top design, I, did, I haven't had good luck with uh, these different heights. So doing loft to close up these gaps, you might do it just so it looks a little bit more complete before you finish. But to finish this design, I would still delete these lofts. And I'd use blend surface. And this is also going to use the edges. So that's going to be my first edge. I'm going to hit enter to start choosing my second edge. I'm going to be careful to start on the same corner when I go around the loop here. And that's going to a corner to a corner. That should be fine. I'm going to choose instead somewhere, somewhere else. I'm going to change that seam 
to somewhere. Oh shoot, I missed it. Um, I would fight you somewhere like a mid. Okay, so a mid. So a mid. And if I want to have some more control on that, um, I might lock these together. And then you can adjust how this is going to happen. You can have curvature, which is your G2, or you can try tangency if you want to have just a, a G1, which is all that means is the number of, of uh, control points you have here. So it's really dictating how strong the blend is going to be, uh, kind of pulled in each direction. So putting that on 2 and 2 makes it stronger, and G3 is stronger still. And each of these you could still adjust individually if you wanted to have a stronger shape on this side. I click once, then I can move that, then click again. And I guess that's pretty good. Uh, the alternative, I guess, if you don't like your blend surface, is you could do, instead, you could do a blend curve and then use that resulting curve as your rail. So if I drew a line here, that's kind of a target. And I'll use the yellow, because this is going to be a profile. And I'll go from this curve over to here. Then you can use that as your profile. Just copy it over. And so I'm going to choose uh, these four curves as, as my rail. This border will be my other rail. I'll change that to a different color, maybe the red color. And so rail one and rail two selected, and I'll start. I'm really liking sweep 2 with no history more now. Uh, it does have history now, so I, I still prefer that now, the new one. Okay, um, I'll say that's fine. And so it's a little bit better in the corners. And still if you want to, I guess, you could adjust this target if you want to adjust the shape if you're getting here for your blend which is making the profile And I guess if you move both of these, they'll match up together. So you can play around with that too. Uh, that sweep wasn't quite perfect. I forgot to adjust my rail, which I don't think is making a big difference, but I think if I was doing that, I would still just include all of these profiles, and they're mirrored. But they're rotated and copied or mirrored if you just one, but they would also adjust along with it, so, um, so there'd be no, no chance of no worry about, uh, about them not changing to adjust along with it. So then, just to finish this off, I don't know why that one's a little messed up. Okay, that looks fine now. So, um, if I'm happy with that shape, I'm going to join these objects all together. And if I do join these objects together, then you are breaking history. So you can no longer make changes. 
Um, before you do that, you might choose just to save everything in case you do want history available again. And then I'm going to join everything together. And you could save it again. So it's, uh, it's the version with no history or history's been broken. And so now I want to cut through for the finger. For that, I'm going to use um, you could cap it if you wanted to, and then use Boolean Builder. Okay, it's saying that this is not able to be capped. This is the bottom is not planar. I'm not sure why, but I'll do I'll do split instead. And if I split two objects, if I want to split. Uh, this object with this and then steal that inside surface from this using this as the cutting object uh, Which is a frequent Strategy that I use that you want to have them end on the same plane So if, uh, if this ends on this plane, I want to have this end on this plane as well So I'm going to choose that object to split using this I'm going to keep the top with the control click and then delete the bottom and so now the gray, I can choose to split using this, enter. And I'm going to keep the top part, but delete the rest. And so then I'm left with the inside being left open. And then to steal that inside, I'm going to highlight this object and split it using the gray, which it doesn't want to do actually. Because this is not going quite low enough, that's why it's not planar. So I messed up there with, with that profile. Side's going down all the way. I don't think this side is the one that I clicked on the wrong one. So I'm going to choose just to cut this whole ring in half. And so the left side is messed up. So I'll split it using this cutter, save this half, delete the rest. And this I'm going to mirror across to F4. And then join those together. And then I should be able to steal the inside using this curve, using this as my cutter. Which again, it will not. Why? I thought I caught the only mistake that I found, but um. You could always make the inside surface a different way. I guess I might as well. I might as well just do a sweep two. This is my first rail, this is my second rail, and this is going to be my profile. But first I'm going to join that profile together. And that's my profile, then enter to finish. And I'm going to mirror that surface. And so that'll join together. And really, I don't need to use this curve I have going here. Instead, I could just have my two profiles here, which if I don't have it on both sides, maybe I'll just duplicate the whole thing. So I'm going to duplicate the border. Shoot. I 
There seems to be bigger problems here. Yeah, there's a naked edge here. So I match something else up. So it must have been with that move, something got adjusted that I should have made sure to also either reapply or Let's remake this wall though and make sure I'm choosing the edges so that that's going to be, that's going to line up to the other edge perfectly. And then I'm going to mirror and I'll join these together. And again, this I'm going to choose to split, which I already have here actually. So then this object I'm going to split using, using this orange. I'm going to keep the majority, but delete the rest. And then to seal the inside, I'm going to take this and split using the ring. And that gives us three halves, which we keep the inside. Okay, so now for the bottom, I'm going to use duplicate order, which should only grab the ends here. And they're already joined. And then I'm going to use sweep two from this profile to this profile and match up my scene points. And then I'll join this together. Okay, so it's a little bit on creating a either square or some kind of a more flat sided uh, ring. I guess anything that's four sides can be done this way, but it has corners still. Um, if you're doing something that's more rounded, we're going to do another uh, example showing how to do a really smooth round top. Because that can be done, uh, that kind of sweeps can be done a little bit differently. Um, but before, before I move on to that, I'm going to just talk about creating uh, a shell from this using a shell command uh, to create this inside section here to be hollow. So one thing about sh uh, the shell command and hollowing, if you're going to use surface offset or surface offset with the solid option turned on, it doesn't always like all surfaces. Really, if it's more complicated, there's a stronger likelihood that it's going to fail. And if there's a lot of uh, funny radiuses in that, um, and if you're offsetting inwards, it doesn't always like to do that. So for that purpose, I had to just re redraw this top a little bit simpler, uh, just for the sake of showing this tutorial. Otherwise, I would have had to reproduce that surface that um, if it was being offset inward, I'd have to kind of rebuild that section, just doing kind of surface by surface, which isn't the nicest, uh, doesn't make it the nicest tutorial. So I'll show this just for uh, simplicity's sake. So this is the finished ring, let's say, and that ring you probably want to have saved. And one way to create this hollowing is using a command called shell. And this command currently is only accessible through typing. It might also be a tool in, up in the Rhino tools up here or something, but I haven't really looked through there too much. So right now I'm just finding it through typing shell. And you can change the thickness if you want it, but you have to choose also faces that you want to remove. So in this case, I've removed the inside faces and then hit enter to finish. And that can take a little while sometimes. And so now it's created all the inside surfaces by offsetting the outside ones in by that thickness. 
And that works pretty well. Um, there is a little bit of a problem that down here, this is also hollowed. So I'm going to save that. And I'm going to quickly also show you to the way to hollow. If you don't want to do that. If, uh, if you don't want to type in the command shallow or shell to hollow, geez. Um, you could extract these surfaces, so all that you're left with is the outside surface. And using offset surface with the solid option turned on, you can change your distance as well. And I'm going to flip that inwards, then hit enter. And this is pretty much the same command as shell. Works very much in the same way. Not sure if there's going to be any difference at all with this. Looks like there's a few changes actually with actually the angle that it's offsetting. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. So just for the inside of the band, it seems like it's keeping that inside wall a bit straighter using the shell command. Okay, so there's a difference. Okay, so I'm going to keep the... I'm going to keep the shell one. I kind of like the shell one a little bit more. And I'm going to bring back the solid shape as well. And maybe I'm going to turn the solid shape on blue. So this is just one of many ways that you could change your shell to object to be solid on the bottom but for the hollowing to stop about around here so and so far this is the easiest way that i've thought of is to draw a curve where you want the shallow or the ho hollowing to stop and for that you might choose to turn on your project mode and you might Turn off your snaps just to make it a bit simpler. But I'm going to say that the hollowing I want to stop gradually on an angle like this or so. You can draw that however you like. This represents the hollow section right here, but you could just draw it out here to be safe and then gradually meet down to the inside surface and, and go through the surface all the way. Okay, and then that curve, I'm going to mirror, and I'm going to make that into a closed curve. Um, I'll just do polyline for this. I'll turn back on my snaps. I want to make this into a closed curve that's going to go along the outside here. And for that section, you can use blend or just a single line. It doesn't matter because this is outside of the ring. And that object I'm going to extrude into a cutter on both sides, and it's too large. Okay, so I'm going to be first, we're going to cut away this section of the shelled one that has too much hollowing. So that's going to be a Boolean difference. I'm going to keep that cutter though. Okay, so we have this right here. Then I bring back the blue. And with the blue, we're going to do a Boolean intersection. So it's only going to keep the part where these two objects intersect, which is going to be just this part here. So now when I bring these pieces back, then you're going to have that hollowing stop where I cut that using that curve right there. And so for this just to finish, let's just do a Boolean union. And then it's all joined up. So there's going to be a lot of different ways to do that, but that's probably 
pretty easy way. We're pretty familiar with using Boolean Builder, so I think that's a pretty decent way to do that. Okay, so next we're just going to go and draw a different style signet ring. We'll draw one that um, that has a round and a circular top, so there's no corners. For a circular top signet ring, I'm going to begin again just with the finger rail, and I'm going to draw a circle. And I'll start from F4 and I'll make this maybe 10 millimeters. And again, we're going to raise that by the height that we're after. I'll choose maybe four this time, maybe four and a half. And again, we're going to draw our profile and we're going to place it at the 25 or the 75 point. And for this one, I want to choose a profile, but one that has rounded corners. I might choose number four. You could use something like this with sharper corners, but we do want to soften those corners. It's going to help the surface a little bit because we're going to use the uh, curve network function again, which prefers this being softer corners. So I'm going to fill up those edges. And for this section, we don't need to have the inside surface right here. And I'm going to change that to the yellow. And then for here, we want to draw the way that it's going to appear. Let's draw on our through finger. So I'm going to use that and tangent trick again. So I'm going to start here and then start drawing along. And before I finish, I'll hit end tangent. I'll make sure that I'm grabbing onto the right curve though. This is only allowing me to, to highlight on the yellow curve. Okay, there it is on that white curve. So you can see in five, it highlights slightly on which curve you're going to be snapping to, which is helpful in this case, just to make sure that we're snapping onto the right curve to end tangent with. Okay, so that's going to be the through finger outside rail. And we're also going to draw one, another curve in our side view. And for this project mode is also still turned on. And actually for this, I might also draw some targets. Okay, so between these two targets, I'm going to make a blend surface. That's going to give me a nice shape. Okay, um, that curve you may choose. You may choose to mirror it. I'm not going to actually. I'm just going to finish off this line here. This might be strange looking, but I'm going to make a single line that continues from the end of this to the end here. And that curve I'm going to mirror to the other side. And I'll join this together. Actually, I do live and eat this on the other side. Okay, and the reason why we could have split with a point, but I'm going to split this curve using these two curves right here. And I guess I'll just throw that half away. I don't really need it. Okay, so we have our profile here. This is our top profile that we're going to. And this should be all that we all that we need. So I can choose a curve or a color for the surface. And these are going to be our three rails, and this will be our two profiles. I'm going to create that ring using curve network. Okay, 
think that looks pretty good. Again, to see what that really looks like, I'm going to take my inside finger and I'm going to extrude that through here. So we can really get a better idea of what this looks like. Now I'm going to mirror this to the other side. That's going to be a copy. Okay, and I'm not going to worry too much about finishing the bottom. If you wanted to, you could try maybe... Uh, well, my engine and my surface are too long, so... I mean, you could maybe just duplicate the edge, so you're not going to fuss with these these curves because I don't want to do anything to them. So I'm going to make a new curve and then split my new curve from the surface and delete the inside. And you can use that new curve to sweep the bottom, just for visualization sake. So there's the red curve to the red curve. Okay, um, it's twisting, so it's going to have to do something with the direction of that curve. There's anything else you want to change? Um, I guess you could finish off the top here if you want to be flat. You could use planar surface, or if you wanted to have it be slightly domed, you could use maybe we could try using loft from this surface to this surface and match the tangents. It's going to give it a dome. Okay, but again, everything is going to be all separate here, it's not joined, because that's going to allow us to, to make any changes in case we want to make this look any different. Make any changes that you really wanted to. Um, I want that to be straight. I probably don't want to play around with this too much. If I play around with this, it's going to make the way that it joins to the bottom half a little bit funny looking. This, what this transition is, it's kind of looking a bit funny. But actually going that direction is kind of fixing this shape here. It wasn't crazy about before. It was kind of dipping in a bit, so going out this way is kind of fixing that a bit.
still my crazy how this is going in a bit. So I guess I will move that a bit to the side. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, you could also just change the outside shape if you wanted to. Right now there's no targets for that that's making that shape, so just by adjusting the control points you're going to be changing the shape of the ring. Okay, um, if you didn't want to have that kind of a domed top, you could create planar curves from these edges. And like we did before with the other one, if I make it a scale to that inside surface. Uh, right now, the main problem for this is that uh, this is only one edge, as you can see there. I'm going to have an edge here and, and an edge here, so that's cut. So you could use utilities and split edge on this edge to cut that in half. And then you could use either loft on the edges if you want to use any tangency. Uh, or you could, to finish off, you might, if you want this kind of a look, you might use um, blend surface again to finish up. Okay, um, to finish this up, Yes, sorry, you can see there for just for clarity's sake, that's not matching the exact profile. So, Curve Network does take liberty of changing the surface a little bit off the input curves. You could adjust that a little bit if you want to rather have, to have it closer to the profile. You'd have to either play with the stiffness um, or or increase the point count. I'll select the yellow there. Okay. So increasing there's no point count for this, that's something different. Um, but you could also play with, no, there's a, there's a point count. But there's these, these different options right here. These ones only apply if you're using a surface as an input. But if you wanted to play with uh, these tolerances, then they'll match perhaps more closely. To your curves. But that is making it a much larger surface and as well as adding a bit of stiffness to it, I believe. So this kind of corner turn up more and more. And if you're after it being kind of soft, maybe you don't really want that. Okay, so if you're after it being softer, maybe you want to play with it at a lower number or like with this loose option. And if you want to, you could also um, 
Well, I don't think rebuild. I think rebuild is going to break it actually. But at the end, if you wanted to, you could maybe rebuild it if you're happy enough with that shape, but you want this to be slightly softened. Uh, you could try using rebuild. And just reduce that number slightly. Okay, if you were to use something like that, though, then you're going to have to. Duplicate that edge for the bottom. And you are losing your history. But that should still match up to this one right here if we mirror it. And so you might as well join these together because there's no history involved in that, anyways. And if you want to steal that inside surface, we're going to split this orange to the same level. So the two objects are coplanar, and then the red you can split using the orange and keep the majority, but delete the rest. And then do the same thing for this. We're going to delete the outsides. We're going to keep the inside. If you want to use blend surface for this, if you don't want to use any history. Adjust that as we please. And then join it together. And then grab the bottom edge right here using duplicate border. And then we'll sweep this bottom using those new profiles that we just made using duplicate border. If we wanted to try to shell this, then let's try typing shell and take out the inside thickness or the inside faces. We have a thickness of one millimeter currently. Okay, it's having a hard time with this angle here, I think. So maybe for that, let's go through a little bit of um, how we can do that. Because it's doing everything else okay, we just have to reproduce the shape similar on the inside. So you could try to take that ISO curve so it's flat. I uh, say flat, I mean in this window it's planar to this grid, because it's on the quad. And you could just try taking that curve and extruding it or offsetting it by one, which looks like it's bringing it right there, okay. Then I'll do a sweep one with this as my rail and this is my profile. And then that inside I'm going to split using the red. Which it does not want to do for some reason. Split again with that red. Does not want to. Okay, well, let's just make it straight instead. It's close enough to straight, anyways. So I'm going to scale this shape here. The inside will be larger. The blue I'm going to split with this uh, yellow surface. I'm going to keep the majority but delete the top. And that should be planar, so I can just use planar curves to 
close that up. And so that should, that should all join together. Okay, now make it edges. Okay, so I have one that's solid and one that has the shell command applied to it. So the gray is the shelled one. So the solid one, I'm going to cut away the section that is going to make the hollowing. Maybe this time I'll go make it a bit more extreme. Okay, so it's kind of scooping out. And I'll mirror that, and I'll close that up on the bottom, maybe using arc direction. And on the inside, maybe using blend. And then that shape, I'm going to close it using join. I'm going to extrude it on both sides. And before I do my booleans, I'm going to save this. So first, the solid piece, I'm going to use no, I'll first cut the hollow part, the, the shelled surface, and that's going to get cut. I'm going to keep cutter. So now the shelled part is missing the bottom. Then I'm going to do the intersection. Do the intersection second because that's going to make the cutter disappear. Even if I click on keep cutter for some reason. And so now these pieces fit together. And I'm going to use join to connect these back together. Okay, if you want to try to soften that up a little bit, you could try using. Uh, I don't know if it's worth doing, I don't think it is worth doing, but because things go the wrong direction really, but you could soften that with a fillet or something. Yeah, I wouldn't bother with it. It's gonna get softened with polishing anyways. And so that's your shell command and uh, I need a little bit about how to make a rounded signet ring like this, a little, really soft, organic, and uh, a flexible kind of variable signet ring if you have to make any changes to the shape, you know, have some exploration with that design, then uh, I'd recommend building it with uh, this strategy in mind.